One, two, yeah. Winning games, basewinner.com. Yeah. Winning games is a way of life we work. All right, Base Winner Crunch Podcast. We are going to do a two part podcast here today and tomorrow, and we're going to talk about rest of season projections, kind of go over. And what I'm going to do today is go over the the play, the future plays we have, kind of update them, kind of give you my take on where I think those are going to end up. And uh, we'll also take a look at the actual record to date, go into a couple uh, interesting, I don't know if they're great, but they're interesting little novelties about this season. And uh, then next, tomorrow, what we'll do is is we'll go and see, based on our projections for for rest of the season, um, what we have for if anything, and I, there's a couple that I'm leaning towards, and I, I think one's a no-brainer, but uh, uh, what our plays are going to be kind of moving forward. We might have one or two plays uh, for rest of season projection, for rest of season um, future markets. Okay, anyway, let's let's go over the record because I haven't done this. It's been a while since I've done a podcast, and I do apologize. And I'd like to do them as much as you'd like to listen to them and uh, – there's been a lot of work that I've been doing behind the scenes, and I think that you're actually going to be able to see some of this work. Um, I've been working. We have a, a new developer. His name is Scott, and he's he's wonderful. He's just a beautiful, just a great designer. From and you'll see this. As I think I, I don't want to give give it away. We're going to do something next week uh, and, and show you the what we've developed here, and uh, it's really exciting for next year the capabilities because we have so much that we've built already, and it's just getting that out to you and you'll see this as we as we do the podcast you know the the depth that we go into on all these games um and it'd be nice to be able to to share that um and it's it's a lot harder and i thought well just it's an excel man I mean, any designer can do that and it's it's not necessarily that easy um there's there's a lot of collaboration that needs to be done um in in doing that so um but excited for for the capabilities uh, based on, on what we've what we've accomplished here in the, in the short month I've been working with him. So let's take a look at this record here to date. Um, we'll go into the Google sheet and then I'll, I'm going to point out something that's uh, that. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say too, is we're going to we're You might've noticed already. Uh, we're going to audio podcast for um, like your, your, I, any kind of podcast distribution that, that we, we are produced by Libsyn or we use Libsyn to produce our show and to get it out there in the feed. So if you, for example, if you have a, an I, a iPhone that you get our podcast on and you'll notice that it's not on the video, the video is not going to be there. And, and I, I made this decision and we've, we've talked about doing this for, for a long time, but I was on vacation last week and listening to Riley's podcast, which I love. And by the way, EPL, he's, he's just, he's, he's just a, a prodigy on EPL and, and developed Oh, I, I, I want to, I, I'm kind of humbled by what he's done to the EPL model because I, I think, I thought it was really good to start off with, but he's made some improvements to the model and I, I, I'm really expecting a, a profitable EPL season. So if you haven't checked out his podcast, go ahead and do that. And, and he's going to be posting the plays in Slack, our Slack channel uh, every Friday uh, to, uh, to, to let you know what we like on that. It was a real successful weekend last weekend. Anyway, so I'm watching, I'm watching the podcast, uh, on the plane and I'm noticing it's taking a lot of power, man. And I can't really see the numbers. And I, I have my glasses on and I'm, I'm focused on it. And most of the time I'm listening to the podcast in the car and I'm not looking at the, at the screen because I'm looking at the road. Thank God, because I don't want to hit anybody. So Anyway, made the decision. Hey, we're, you know it's better. And and then oh, if you if you try to escape with you know to do something else to I don't know read a book or I guess you could read a book and listen to podcasts at the same time. That's kind of a bad example. But I don't know. Maybe you want to look at a picture or something. Um, whatever picture you guys like to look at. And uh, so you, you you want to look at a picture or I don't know maybe read an email or something. Whatever. If you if you get out of that that iTunes. It stops the podcast, so it, it's just enough to piss you off. So anyway, we're going to an audio podcast. Mike's going to chop a lot of the video up. Um, and then, of course, 
if you guys want something that, that I talk about on the show, I'll put it up in Slack for now. And then in the future, the future is that we will have this. So you'll be like, oh, he's, shit, he's talking about the starting pitchers for St. Louis. Let's go to the St. Louis team page, check out what his ratings are for the starting pitcher. It's going to be really cool. Um, okay, so let's move to the – okay, let's <laughs> – <laughs> I'm excited about like like moving like the product moving forward because I know what we're capable of, of of delivering. Okay, so let's go to the results for the Google Sheet right now. Okay, so it feels this season it feels like we've been punching the balls, and you know you, you it, to me it feels like we're down twenty units. It just it just does, and and I like to be upbeat and optimistic, and I I understand that you know that's possible when you when you wager that you could have a down season. But upon further review, our season, we're down one unit. So really not, I mean, we're used to winning, you know, 92 units over the last two years. So we're used to winning like that. So it feels really awful. But in reality, we're down like one unit. And I thought what was interesting, and I'll just break it down real fast. So sides 312, 321, minus 4.12 units. The totals are ahead of the game, 67 and 49 uh, 3.11 units. So I, I thought it was, you know, Hector posted something in Slack yesterday and I thought it was, was really cool. Like interesting, I guess. Um, I got to pull this up real fast. Okay. So, so what the, the premise of it was like the Red Sox are some ridiculous amount of money on the, up on the spread plus 22 units on the spread, which is amazing considering they're overpriced every day. So I thought, well, gosh, you know, I wonder if I can separate this thing out to see, well, what, what do we do when we play against a team? And I know we've played against the, the Red Sox a lot and, um, it, the results have been shitty, but, uh, so 11 and, and, and this is how bad 11 and 43 minus 17 units playing against the Red Sox. Say it again, say it again, 11 and 43 minus 17 units. Well, that's one team playing on the Dodgers. I thought that that was another interesting one. And this is going to, I'm going to give you a, a you, you want to feel like a real punk kick in the balls. Um, let's say clear that filter. So playing on the Dodgers, let me get that. So on the Dodgers, tw- it seems like we play them every, every night, but I guess we haven't. We've only played the Dodgers uh, 28 times. Gosh, it, it doesn't seem like that. It seems like I'm, I'm playing the Dodgers every night. And I know you're a base winner, you're a Dodgers fan, and I kind of am, but I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, if, if the numbers said play against the Dodgers, it'd be like, we're playing against the fucking Dodgers. But, okay, so 12 and 16 minus 5.95. Um, so that's not, not great. But what's interesting about the Dodgers, and I, I really should have waited to go into this with, uh, I should have waited to go into the Dodgers projection because, but, I'll talk more about that tomorrow too, and maybe today if I can get to it. But this is this X Woba chart that I work on every day, and it, it it what it does is it scores the game based on expected Woba for that particular game, and it's fucking amazing what the Dodgers. It's absolutely amazing what the Dodgers should be at. So they're at fifty and forty one. Um, oh, since May, since May, I guess it's May second. Um, and then there's like there's like three games I missed because I was on the or three days I missed because I was on vacation. So I got to backfill that, and it t- it takes a little bit of time to do that. I wanted to work on this uh, presentation uh, and rest of season stuff because I thought it was more important. So I'll backtrack that. But anyway, what in 91 games they're 50 and 41. They should be. They've they have lost 16 and a half games that they should have won. So how do you lose a half game? Well, it was tied on the ex Wolves chart. So you get a half point for that and they lost it. So they've lost 16 and a half games. They should have won. So since May 2nd, 50 and 41 record, 66.5, 25 should have record. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's unbelievable. And, I, and you see, I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, the future plays here right now. And, and you'll see this, this kind of plays out on the, um, Pythagorean scores for baseball perspective. So let's get into that. What I'm going to do is I've got all of our future plays up, uh, including the plays. We, we made a couple uh, division plays on, I guess it was May 8th, May 8th. And uh, I'll go over those two. And then what, what I'm going to do today is go over the, the totals. And, and, and I'll get into kind of the methodology behind our rest of season projections because it's pretty in-depth. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. 
and uh, as I'm doing these particular teams. So let's start off with Rockies under 81 and a half. And I, you can see I already wrote it in as a loss, so probably should make that in red. So okay, so okay, so how do you do the projections for the rest of the season? Well, it's conceptually not difficult, but getting all the information is in there is is fairly challenging. But so basically, what we do, let me just tell you what we what we got for for Colorado. So sixty eight and fifty seven is what their record is currently. We have them at eighteen point two wins moving forward, eighteen point eight losses, so five hundred rest of the season, so eighty six point two. So about five games above where where they should end up. So it's kind of disappointing. One of the things, and, and I'll show you, let me show you, and then I'll get into the, 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 the Pythagorean pat for the Rockies. So what we do is we do uh, the, the remaining games on their schedule. And if you look, like tonight's John Gray versus Jacob Nix, and then tomorrow Freeland versus Lucchesi. And then on, the, on down the line for all 35 of their games. And we have component stats, their starter, the opponent starter, the opponent's reliever, opponent's offense, all of these different stats. We, we put the, put the uh, probabilities based on crunching them together within this. It's a little bit different than crunch. It's going uh, to, to me, not be as precise, but very close uh, to determine the, the win probability and the amount of runs they're going to score and they're going to about, so obviously a little bit lower on runs, 176 to 179, wins 18.2, 18.8. They're taking all the components remaining of their schedule and add it to what they have right now, and that's, that's their projection. So we have them projected to go over this by a lot, by five games. But what happened to why, – why did this play – why was this play not so good? Well, if you look at their Pythagorean, and if you're listening, I'll, I'll try, to, try to explain it. So their actual record year to date, 68 and 57, but Pythagorean, which uses the amount of actual runs scored, there's a formula based on what they've scored and what they've allowed. And we have that here in the, in the overview page. And I'll, I'll probably make this available via Slack. Uh, the Rockies have scored 585 runs as of last night in a game. And they've allowed more runs, and they've scored 598. To contrast that with the Dodgers, 599 runs the Dodgers have scored. They've only allowed 489. Yet, at, as we talk, the the uh, Rockies are ha- are ahead of them in in by a couple games in the uh, actual standings. But if you look at the Pythagorean pet standings, Dodgers 75 should be 75 and 51, and the Rockies should be 61 and 63. So. If you um, if you look at their, their projections, what we have sixty, based on their Pythagorean pet number sixty one, and what we have them projected at eighteen, they should end up at seventy nine. So, it's not like they've really overperformed. It's just they've been been lucky and on the run scored runs runs against and that's going to happen. So, um, part of doing this is is to explain well, what happened, where where do we stand on these games, how does it look from a from a profit loss standpoint, but you know, also to kind of learn, like, okay, well, guess what? We're not going to be over the last two years on these future plays. We've been ten and one, and it's it's been really good. Um, but I don't think that that's a realistic expectation moving forward. I think that that to be profitable on is definitely a realistic expectation, and it's something that we will we will do and we will strive to do. But that kind of record, you're going to lose future plays like this. That shit, you to be in all honesty, you shouldn't lose. So. It happens like that. So, okay, let's take a look at the at the Cardinals. Cardinals over 86 and a half. So we will look and see where they are right now. And I almost I thought that I thought the Excel was gonna and I have it saved, thank God. It looked like it was gonna <laughs> it was gonna blow up and I said, Oh shit, I did a I mean just a ton of work on this. Um so if you look, Cardinals right now 70 and 57. Um and I don't have this in, in order of of where they're at, but I'm, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not showing you anything on the audio anyway, but 70 and 57. And if you look at the projections, we have them 18.3 and 16.7. So about 500. We have them winning 88.3 games based on our projections. So it's going to be kind of tight. 86.5 is the, t- is the over under. And you know, this is one that really surprised me. Cause I was like, well, shit, the Cardinals are, they're kicking some ass, but 
I mean, we're it's 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 balls to the wall on this one. So almost to the point where, well, I, you know, you you may want to see him win tonight if if you're looking at the Dodgers. Cars is going to go. This one's going to go down to the to the wire. So let's take a look a little bit at the at St. Louis and kind of their their remaining schedule and uh, where they rank. And I'm going to have this like strength of schedule. And St. Louis is right in the middle of the pack, like quality of their schedule remaining one good thing about the Rockies is they're going to face the second toughest starting pitching the average starting pitching they're going to face projected as 93 they're also going to face I think like the the 10th the 10th most difficult offense moving forward so let's take a look at St. Louis and kind of see St. Louis is going to face kind of middle of the pack starting pitching uh the relief that they're going to be facing is middle of the pack offense uh, the total offense they're going to be facing is pretty good. Is, is number is seven. So we have them about 500, a little, little over 500. So it's going to be nip and tuck, balls to the wall. I will put this in as a win right now because it's it's trending towards the win. And I'll put it in kind of light green. Um, and then Mariners. So let's take a look at Mariners. Mariners, and this has been kind of a dream team for us. And, and so – We'll get into the Pythagorean on them, too, because it's it's important to understand that sometimes you do get a little bit lucky, too. So the Mariners, 525 and 565, uh, 5, 525 runs scored, 565 runs against, yet they're 72 and 55. So what should they be right now is they should be based on Pythagorean. And you can go to Baseball Prospectus. They have the Pythagorean Pat standings. It's pretty cool, first order standings. Um and you can get this, what I'm talking about. So the Mariners really should be 59 and 67. So what we're projecting for the Mariners is, they, okay, so their projection was 81.5 over. That was, the, that was the total that we had on them. And looking like this, they need to win nine games uh, of their remaining, and we have them 18 and 16. So we have them projected at 90.2 wins. So they're going to have to really implode to, to blow that. And I don't think that's going to happen. So it could. I mean, you know, anything could happen. But we counted this, the Reds as a loss over last year, and they, they they lost a lot of games at the end, and we snuck that one in. So that was good. And uh, anyway, so let's let's conversely, and I'll, I'll be fair about this because if they were based on their Pythagorean sixty, let's say fifty nine wins, because fifty nine point two, and we have them at at winning 18 more games so that would that would project to 77 so they would be under so as much as as kind of hard luck we've gotten with with the rockies we've gotten a little bit lucky with the mariners so okay so that's a winner and now let's take a look at the royals royals under 69 plus 105 and i don't think i really have to talk too much about this one this one was a this this one was started off and gill will say it a ton of times on his show. He got it at 76.5, but it got went down to 69. And uh, they've only won 38 games. So I guess there's 35 games left. So they're, I guess if they won them all, you'd, you'd still lose. You'd lose your bet. But we have them winning 14 more games, so 52 games. So that one, we can, we can put it in the... As Chick Hearn would say, it's in the refrigerator, the eggs are cooler, cooling, and the butter's getting hard. Chick Hearn was such a good announcer for the Lakers, you guys. From L.A., he was awesome. All right, so put him in the popcorn machine. That was another one. Magic to worthy, magic to worthy. Anyway, I'm going to digress. Okay, let's take a look at the Phillies here. How are the Phillies doing? We have Phillies over 77, minus 144. All right. They are overperforming. Uh, They're 68 at 57, and we have them projected about... 50-50 50-50 moving forward, um, so 86.9 wins, and so I think that's a comfortable comfortable to say that's a W. Okay, Brew Crew, have we lost this one yet? We're we're close to losing this one. Brew Crew, let's see, let's see Brew Crew. Milwaukee Brewers. 70 and 58. We have them winning 17 more games. So 87.6. So that one, well, it's not it's not a lock though. I mean, you, you so, shit, you look at these games and you go, well, you know, 3 games is not 
that big of a deal here in baseball with 35 to play. So I hope they get cold. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count. The, I'm gonna write this in as a loss. But I I honestly think the the Rockies one is is more of a loss than which is surprising, and that's why I counted we go over it. So this could we could get that one for one unit, and uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in as a as a loss for now. And we have one of the things about the Brewers I wanted to go into the Pythaga pet with Brew Brew Crew. It seems like that fucking team gets so lucky. There, there were six games on the on the expected WOBA, so not as egregious as the Dodgers, but nevertheless. Um, let's see, Brewers seventy and fifty eight uh, as of the end of end of business end of MLB business yesterday, and they should be sixty six point five and sixty one. So not as not as awful as I as I thought. Uh, look at the Cardinals; they're they're Pythagorean and their actual record the exact same. Interesting. So, but still, four games, which we could we could certainly use that um, in this push towards the end. So, well, yeah, that one's probably going to lose, but there's still, I think, it's not as dead as I thought it was. I thought that that one was more dead than the, than the Rockies one. And unfortunately, that Rockies one looks like it's, it ain't going to play. Let's look at the Rockies schedule. Let's see if there's any, any kind of bumps in the road for them. That damn Dodger series where they play, just what a what a suck job that was, losing that game on Saturday night, and then there was a, the other one that was tied on Sunday, but they were up I think three nothing on Saturday night. And we'll talk about the Dodgers tomorrow because it'll make them a play, I think. So okay, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about the future schedule for Colorado. Well, that sucks. They play, they play St. Louis next next week at home. Be really nice if St. Louis can sweep those bastards. Um, let's see if we got. Uh, they play the Dodgers at home. Seems do they ever play the Dodgers on the road, or do they just have fucking home games against the Dodgers? Okay, they're, they're on the road. OTR versus the Dodgers, and uh, <laughs> there it is. Projected Alex Wood, Ryu, and Bueller versus Anderson, Gray, and Freeland. They're one, two, three versus, I guess it would be the three, four, five for the four, two, three, four for Dodgers. That's the projected starters as of now. You know, that'll probably change. But they play the, they play the, the D backs a couple times. Um, play the Phillies. Some Phillies are pretty good. Th- uh, Washington's pretty good. Like you'll see some, some ratings we have for Washington um, that are kind of, I guess, controversial. I think they have the second, even with, with the, with the deletion of Murphy, that they, they're like second best offensively. Let's, let's look at that. Actually, if we look at offensive ratings, total offensive ratings. Okay. Numero uno. And this is kind of a combination of whatever they've got remaining home away, right, left. It's kind of a combination of, of what we have them rated in the 35 games they have remaining. So number one offense, the Dodgers, baby, 115.2 is their base winner number, so 15% above average. We have Oakland at 115.1, Washington at 113. What's noteworthy about the Dodgers and Washington is their National League teams. So 113 and 9 for Washington, Boston 112. And rounding out the top five offensive base winner numbers remaining is Houston at 110.3. So low, low guys. Uh, offensively, Tampa Bay 92, Chicago 91, Royals 91, Padres 90, and Marlins 84. Those are the shitty offensive teams. Okay, Be- oh, best starting pitching. Well, I might as well go. So, top five starting pitching teams. Here we go. Number one, Houston 80. This is a cumulative base winner number based on their rotation as of today and the games remaining so houston number one arizona number two 82 base winner number boston number three 86 base winner number and and, you know so you see we're not like totally harsh on boston we've kind of upped their rating so that's a year's uh gone on but even so like they're totally overpriced cleveland 86 and number five dodgers 86 baby and here are the crappiest starting pitching. No surprise, Cincinnati, 26th, 110. Detroit, 27th, 111. Kansas City, 28th, 112. Texas, 116. There's two play against. Oh, I got to go into the play against quadrants. I'm not going to do that today. I'll go against. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do that one 
uh, on Friday. So today's Wednesday, Thursday. I'll talk a little bit about the Dodgers and future play, and then maybe I'll I'll go into quadrant evaluation on Friday, if time permits. Okay, so Texas one sixteen, Chicago White Sox one twenty six. Jesus. So how do how does how do you do that? I just I just want to do look at this White Sox. Yeah, they're awful. The one two three, the one two three four five for your Chicago White Sox. Let's look at that. Carlos Rodon, ninety nine. He's their best guy, so he's serviceable. James Shields, one one twenty five. Covey, one twenty one. Lopez, one thirty four. And Giolito, one forty eight. What a awful rotation. Okay, bullies. And I think that the worst bullpen is the Royals. No, it's not. I'm wrong. Okay, best bullpens. Houston, seventy seven. I just did this on Monday, so they're they're, they're current. Uh, Houston. Number one, Yankees at 76. Yankees, 76, number two. That was with Chapman in, and I, I don't think it's really going to change that much because they they got pretty good depth. Cleveland, 83. Philadelphia, 85. And the Dodgers, baby, 88. And that's based on what's the top end, like moving forward, like what, what they're going to be projected to use moving forward. So really, my, here's my take on the Dodgers. I think that they've, they haven't been totally awful They've they've lost some close games. I don't I don't think that their component stats are as bad as what everybody's talking about, and I, I think that they'll be okay moving forward. I, I really well we'll talk about the plays tomorrow. Anyway, relief worst relievers Chicago twenty sixth Washington uh, one eleven. So maybe when you get a crappy pitcher with Washington. And they've got a crappy bullpen, and they've got the second best hitting team in, or the fourth best, I think it was, by our ratings. Could be, could be a look ahead, look to the over. Baltimore, 28th uh, at 113. Kansas City Royals, 29th at 115. Uh, Marlins, 119 with the worst bullpen. Okay, so we, we, we kind of got off a little bit, but who cares? So those were good numbers. And let's go to the Rangers. Rangers, one unit under 76. So our projection for the Rangers, let's, let's get back to season projections here. Season projections, here we go. Rangers, they are 56 and 72. We have them projected with, with that wonderful pen, with that wonderful starting pitching to win 13 games and lose 20, well, roughly 21, 21. So... 69.3 wins, the over under 76 and a half. So this one's better than I thought. I thought, well, shit, Texas has been winning some games. Maybe th that one's going to end up a loss. So, okay, so this is kind of based on like, I think pretty realistic expectations. We, we're going to lose the three unit on Rockies. We're going to win the two, three units, one on the Cardinals, one on the Mariners. Uh, Royals and Phillies, the two units are going to win. The Brewers is going to lose as a one unit, and the Rangers are going to win. So that's one, two, three, four, five, five and two. I would take that. Like somebody coming in with with the with the with the one of the losses being a one star. If somebody would have come to me and say, "Okay, this is this is what you're going to do on these future plays at the start of the year," I, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'll take that. That's good." Okay, let's look at these divisional plays here because we might we might lose some steam. We definitely will lose this this Yankees minus one hundred two to win the division. It was a good play at the time. Yankees have just gotten they've they've had really bad injuries and the, then the Red Sox have overperformed. So the Yankees, I mean, you can't. I, somebody was talking about this today. Judge is out, Gregorius is out, Chapman's now hurt. So uh, Sanchez out. Now, these guys are like freaking like top. I mean, let's let's look at this real fast. Okay, so two guys have been out in the, out of the lineup for quite some time. Judge is base winner one forty two. So that places him as a base winner number, number, oh, he's not number 16, the base winner number, base winner number nine, so the ninth best guy, and then you've got Sanchez, and he's in the top 20 at 132, so these guys have been out, and you know, I'm, I'm not going to make excuses, but no, I am, I'm making excuses and saying they're, but that's going to happen when you make a future play, so we will count this, this play, we will count as a loss 
and I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any hope with that. Well, I mean, let's look at the projected standings to see if there is there any possible way. We have well, <laughs> we have the Yankees right now at one hundred and one and sixty. This is with the lineup without with the injured lineup. Let's let's look at this this Yankees lineup here. Okay, so it's pretty close to the lineup that we use, and they're 110 home, 107 versus right, and versus left. Okay, this, this is kind of the way the, the lineup that we, we use here for our projections. Hicks, Stan Andujar, Torres, Luke Voigt, Walker, Romine, Robinson, and Gardner. So, like, let's, let's, say, we, let's say we put in Judge and Gregorius. And I don't know when they're going to return. So this is this is what's difficult about doing these projections, um, is you don't know on these injuries like exactly when these guys are going to come back in. So this is kind of worst case, because that that um, or, or I'm talking I'm I'm sorry. Let's talk about uh, let's talk. We'll put Sanchez in there. So just just putting those two guys back in bumps it up about eight points. So this is kind of worst case scenario, but I, I don't know. I think either way, this is a this one's a lost cause. I mean, I'm trying to make a case for you know anything can happen type thing. But I mean, when your team wins 101 games, don't necessarily with all those injuries, I don't I don't necessarily think it's it's a disappointing year uh, or disappointing play. I think it's just something that happens. Like I said, those Red Sox, really, we have them projected right now, 109 wins, so pretty amazing. Okay, Dodgers, two units to win the NL West, and I'm going to get into this tomorrow more. I'm going to talk all about the Dodgers because I've got a lot of things to say about the Dodgers. So what I'm going to say right now may be controversial to others. I would say we got about 50-50 chance to win this game. Okay, so we'll talk about the Dodgers tomorrow on tomorrow's podcast. And I'll just, it'll, maybe they'll be all Dodgers because that's going to probably be a play. We'll see what the line is, uh, but based on where it was today, it was, it was a play. Okay, last thing we're going to talk about is the St. Louis to win the division. And we'll talk about this tomorrow too. So these will be the last two items and it might tie into some plays tomorrow that we'll have. But, okay, so we have the projection for this, for this NL Central. We've got the, unfortunately, we've got the Cubs to win this by our projections really aren't that high in the Cardinals. That's the, that's the downside of this. A five to one would be super neat to have. We have the Cubs winning 20.4 of their remaining games, losing 17. Uh, I guess they have more games remaining. Cause that's to me, that is, well, they're at, see, I guess that's, that's probably part of the problem is that Cubs have only play have played unless I have this in wrong 71 and 53. Let's, let's check this. So that yeah, that's really the the problem is you've got the Cubs at 124 games. The Cardinals have played 127, so they've played three more games. So we got unfortunately we got the Cubs projected at 91.4 and the Cardinals at 88.3. There's still the chance we'll run that in the division simulator tomorrow, and we'll we'll try to come up with the the, the probability based on that division simulator and. And right now they're priced at seven to one. So really, the, our bet's not not looking that great. It's not looking that like that great of a bet at five to one. But I mean, there's still hope on it. So I guess overall, if we can get this, is the key. This is get, and it's the key to this is this dodge is this Dodgers uh, play. And I think that based on the numbers that I'm looking at, and we'll get in. We'll get into the whole numbers, the Machado deal tomorrow. I, I I looked at the the batter projection, the batter cutter for Machado, and uh, I think that uh, what was the Mark Twain saying? Something like the report of his death is greatly exaggerated. And I think that uh, we'll we'll look at this Dodger team. I think that there's still some some significant reason to, to like the Dodgers. Okay. Well, that'll, that'll do it for today's podcast. We'll be back tomorrow. So bottom line, these future plays are looking pretty good. looks like we'll, we'll win more than we lose. And then that Dodger play is going to be pretty much key, uh, in that, in the, uh, 
in that mid bet because um, we're risking 2.9 units a risky bet on that one so okay talk to you tomorrow you guys have a great day hope all your bets cash how many jacks base when dot com will help you win stacks crunching numbers all day and all night base winner is Bob Barker he knows what price is right yeah base when it up come the way to make money I bet you I'm not